Hey everyone, Charles here. Welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I want to look at a topic relevant to Cisco's Anarsi exam. That exam is focused on advanced routing and services. The topic we're going to look at today is dynamic multipoint VPN, what we commonly refer to as DMVPN. This is a Cisco iOS based solution for providing easily scalable enterprise VPNs. I want to cover the basic theory first in an overview, and then we'll look at a sample configuration. Let's jump in and take a look. For the Anarsi exam, you need to be able to configure and verify a single hub DM VPN. So here I want to look at an overview of everything involved with DM VPN configuration and the important components of that. And then we'll follow up with the actual configuration. DMVPN stands for Dynamic Multipoint Virtual Private Network, and these are commonly used to build VPNs with multiple sites. So if you have a business with multiple branch locations, that would be a common reason you'd use this. This is considered to be a full mesh capable network, meaning that not only do we have communication between the central hub and each spoke location, but we also have the ability to have dynamic spoke to spoke tunnels established. This allows the spokes to communicate with one another directly without having to pass traffic back to the hub. So it's much more efficient. The tunnels between the spokes can be established and torn down on an as needed basis. DMVPN uses multi-point generic routing encapsulation or MGRE to accomplish this. MGRE supports dynamic routing protocols and it allows a single router interface to form multiple GRE tunnels. So with a normal VPN, you may have a hub and spoke topology that looks like this, where you would configure the HQ router with an MGRE interface, allowing for multiple tunnels to form so that you can interconnect your sites. Optionally, we can configure all of the routers with MGRE interfaces, which would allow us to have DM VPN tunnels form between the spokes themselves as needed. This is a much more scalable option for a multi-site business. Now this does beg the question, how does a spoke router determine the IP address of a router at another spoke site? Spokes are statically configured with the IP address of the hub. But if we start doing that between each and every spoke, well, that's not very dynamic at all. And we aren't gaining anything in regard to the ease of scalability. The solution is the next hop resolution protocol or NHRP. I think of this functionally as being similar to how DNS works. When you open a browser and you put in a specific web address, your browser is going to query a DNS server in order to resolve the web address to an IP address. And then the DNS server would provide the IP address that corresponds to that particular web address. NHRP uses a similar client server model where the hub will act as a server and the spoke acts as clients. Since the hub is connected to all of the spokes, the hub does have an awareness of all of the addresses needed for communication between those spokes. So for example, we can see that our branch A router has a tunnel interface IP address of 10.1.1.5 with a physical interface IP address of 192.168.10.5. The HQ router would be educated about this correlation by the branch A router, and it would keep a record of this in its own NHRP database. This would be the same for all of the branch routers as well. It would have an awareness of those. So in a standard configuration, if branch B wants to communicate with branch A, that would require the traffic to travel back through the hub or the HQ router. However, if we use DMVPN with NHRP, the branch B router would simply query the HQ hub router asking for the physical interface IP address that is associated with the tunnel interface IP address for that other router, which in this case would be 10.1.1.5. The HQ router would check the NHRP database and it would see that the corresponding physical IP address is 192.168.10.5 and it would return this information back to the branch B router. Now, branch B with an interface configured for MGRE would be able to dynamically set up a tunnel with the branch A router, which would allow for more optimal traffic flow. 
This also allows for much easier provisioning for new spoke routers. In our topology, you can see that we have an HQ router connected over the internet to three branch locations, and those are labeled branches A, B, and C. The HQ router is going to be our DMVPN hub, and those three branch locations will be our DMVPN spokes. We also have PC1 at branch A with the IP address of 50.1.1.10, and we have PC2 at branch C with the IP address of 60.1.1.10. You can see that each of those will have their own separate subnet, and we also have a note telling us that our GRE addresses will use the 172.16.10.0 slash 24 subnet. Also, you can see the cloud in our topology representing the public internet, and in my physical topology, I have a router labeled ISP that's acting as the public internet. I have EIGRP configured on the hub router, as well as the three branch routers. On the hub and the spokes, I've added the GRE address space of 172.16.10.0 slash 24 into the EIGRP network list. So that's advertised into EIGRP. And on branches A and C, I've also added their private networks that are dedicated to the PCs into EIGRP as well. So let's see what we currently have in place. Let's connect into the ISP router. And if we say show run pipe to section begin interface, this is going to get us straight into our interface configuration output. And you can see that we have three interfaces configured on the ISP router. Those all have a description stating what they're used for. Gig zero slash one, that connects to our HQ router and gig zero slash two through four connect out to the branch locations. So they provide reachability to those global address spaces. Notice gig zero slash one is assigned the IP address of 10.1.1.2. So it's on the same subnet as the HQ router. If we go to our HQ router and say show IP route static, you can see that I have my default route on the HQ router set to this same IP address. So in other words, all of the traffic is going out to this ISP router as the next hop, if there isn't a more specific route in the routing table. Next, still on the HQ router, let's create a new tunnel interface for this hub. So we're going to start with the DMVPN hub configuration. By default, a tunnel interface will use GRE encapsulation. So let's create that by going into global configuration mode on the HQ router and saying interface tunnel. And if we look at contextual help, we want to give that tunnel interface a number. I'll just make this tunnel zero in this case. Now we're under tunnel interface configuration mode. And the next step is to identify the local source of the tunnel. We can say tunnel source, the actual IP address of the interface that's going out to our ISP router or the interface number. Either way works, but I typically prefer to use the interface number itself. Now, when we start spoke configuration, if our spokes had dynamically assigned IP addresses on their interfaces, which is quite possible, you can see why we would not want to use the IP address and why we would rather choose the interface itself. If the IP address changed, it would bring our tunnel down. So generally, I just prefer to use the interface number. Next, we want to configure this tunnel interface for multipoint GRE or MGRE. Remember, that's necessary for an interface to be able to form multiple GRE tunnels. We do that by saying tunnel mode GRE multipoint. You can see that we just got a console message letting us know that our tunnel zero interface is now in the up state. So let's give this an IP address. Remember that we want these tunnels to be in the 172.16.10.0 slash 24 subnet. So let's say IP address, and we'll set this interface to 172.16.10.1 with a slash 24 subnet mask, and we'll say no shut just for good measure. Next, we want to enable next hop resolution protocol on the tunnel interface. This is going to allow our spokes to later query the HQ router 
for information about the other spokes so that DMVPN connections can be initiated between the spokes. Let's say IP, NHRP, and if we look at contextual help, the option we're looking for is network hyphen ID. You can see that this is the NBMA network identifier. NBMA meaning non-broadcast multiple access. NHRP was originally developed for NBMA networks, such as ATM or frame relay. So we need to configure a network ID here, and that has to match on the hub and the spokes. This ID ensures that the next hop resolution can properly take place. So I'll say network hyphen ID, and I'll just give this an ID of one. The next thing we can do is to define a tunnel key. As you can imagine, these also need to match on both the hub and the spoke. So let's say tunnel key and contextual help tells us we have a very wide range of possibilities. If we have multiple virtual tunnel interfaces using the same tunnel source, then this tunnel key is going to help identify the correct DMVPN virtual tunnel interface that we want to use. So I'm just gonna make this key one, two, three. Let's also add a password string for authentication to add some security. Let's say IP, NHRP, authentication, and I'll just set that to the very simple value of Cisco. And finally, something unique to hub configuration as opposed to spoke configuration is determining if we want to enable multicast support. DMVPN can allow multicast traffic to flow over the tunnel interfaces, so let's enable that. Let's say IP, NHRP, map, multicast, dynamic. There are other options we can configure if we want, things like the bandwidth for QoS, the MTU size, and other things. So let's do some of those. We can set the MTU size by saying IP MTU, and I'll say 1400. We can set the maximum segment size as well by saying IP TCP adjust hyphen MSS, and I'll make that 1360. These are optional, so in a production environment, you may have to do some experimentation to find out what works best for your network. Typically, you wanna make sure your maximum segment size is 40 bytes under whatever you set the MTU size to, as I've done here with this configuration. One other thing we want to do in order to make sure EIGRP works correctly to advertise routes over the GRE tunnel is to use the command no IP next hop self EIGRP1. We are using EIGRP autonomous system number one on this router. So this is going to make sure that when the HQ router is learning routes from let's say branch C and it's advertising those to branch A, this is gonna make sure that the HQ router does not replace the next hop address with its own IP address. It can instead use the tunnel interface IP address of branch C. And likewise, we also want to say no IP split horizon EIGRP1. Since we're using a single interface here connected to multiple branches, we need to be able to relay advertisements back out of the interface on which they were received. Disabling split horizon for EIGRP will take care of that for us. Let's go over now to our first spoke, branch A, and let's do a quick show run we can see the interface configured already pointing to the ISP router here. And we can see that this is set as the default route as well on the router, so that's good. Let's break out of this and let's go under global configuration mode and configure our tunnel interface. Many of the same commands are going to be used here. Let's say interface tunnel zero. We could use a different tunnel number by the way, but I'll just keep that the same as the HQ to simplify things. Let's say tunnel source, and that will be gig zero slash one, as you can see in our topology. Let's configure this interface for MGRE by saying tunnel mode GRE multipoint. Let's set an IP address as well in the 172.16.10.0 subnet. So I'll say IP address 172.16.10.2 with a slash 24 mask and I'll say no shut. Let's configure the network ID or the NBMA network identifier in other words and make that match the HQ router. Remember that needs to match. 
So IP NHRP network hyphen ID, and that was number one. We need to specify our authentication password and key as well. So let's say tunnel key, and that was set on the HQ router as 123, and also IP NHRP authentication, and we set that to Cisco on the hub router. Here's something that is a bit different. Remember on the HQ hub, we used the command IP NHRP map multicast dynamic. Here we want to point that to the globally routable address or the NBMA address of the HQ router itself instead of using the dynamic option. We do that by saying IP NHRP map multicast followed by the address which is 10.1.1.1 in our topology. Next, we want to create a manual mapping that tells our router that in order to reach the GRE tunnel interface of the HQ router at 172.16.10.1, we want to use the globally routable address, the NBMA address, which is 10.1.1.1. So we'll say IP NHRP map, followed by the GRE tunnel interface of the HQ at 172.16.10.1, and then followed by the NBMA address of the HQ router at 10.1.1.1. So this single static mapping associates the HQ's NBMA address of 10.1.1.1 with the GRE tunnel interfaces address of 172.16.10.1. We want to follow that by defining the next hop server address for the NHRP on the spoke using the command IP NHRP. And if we look at our help options, we want to use the NHS keyword for defining the next hop server. So let's say NHS followed by the HQ tunnel interface IP address of 172.16.10.1. We should see an adjacency form in our console and we do see a message about that, so that's great. We do also still need to configure our MTU and our maximum segment size, so let's do that. Let's go under first global configuration mode, then under interface tunnel zero, and we'll say IP MTU 1400, followed by IP TCP adjust hyphen MSS 1360. Now let's go over to the branch B router We'll do this one a little bit faster because it's essentially the same configuration other than the IP address assignment for the tunnel interface. So let's say interface tunnel zero, tunnel source, gig zero slash one. We'll give this one an IP address of 172.16.10.3 with a slash 24 mask. And we'll say no shut. We'll set our IP NHRP network hyphen ID to one. Our tunnel key was one, two, three. We want to say IP NHRP authentication, and we set that to Cisco. Now we need to do our mappings by saying IP NHRP map multicast 10.1.1.1, IP NHRP map 172.16.10.1 to the address 10.1.1.1 and IP NHRP NHS 172.16.10.1. We'll say IP MTU and set that to 1400. And we'll say IP TCP adjust hyphen MSS to 1360. Tunnel mode, GRE multipoint. Soon we'll get a console message letting us know that an EIGRP neighborship has formed. And there it is. So that looks good. Let's jump to branch C and do the exact same thing under global configuration mode. Interface tunnel zero, tunnel source, gig zero slash one, tunnel mode, GRE multipoint, IP address 172.16.10.4, a slash 24 mask, and no shut, IP NHRP network hyphen ID one. Our tunnel key is one, two, three. IP NHRP authentication, that was Cisco. IP NHRP map multicast 10.1.1.1. IP NHRP map 172.16.10.1 to 
to 10.1.1.1 and IP NHRP NHS 172.16.10.1. IP MTU, we'll set that to 1400. And finally, IP TCP adjust MSS 1360. We'll have our EIGRP neighborship form. And there we go. So we're good here. Let's exit and let's say show DMVPN. So from this output, we can see that this is a static mapping. That is indicated by the S at the end. And this tells us that if we need to reach the tunnel interface of 172.16.10.1, the hub tunnel interface, in other words, then we should use the NBMA address of the hub at 10.1.1.1. We can also see the same information by saying show IP NHRP. And here we see the tunnel zero interface. We see that the hub interface 172.16.10.1 is reachable via the NBMA address of 10.1.1.1. Let's jump onto PC2 now, which is connected to the branch C router, as you can see in the topology. And let's perform a trace route command to PC1 on the other side, which is connected to branch A. And once that completes, let's examine our output and see our traffic flow. You can see the first hop is the branch C interface that connects to the PC, which is the IP address 60.1.1.1. Next, that uses the hub tunnel interface of 172.16.10.1, then it goes to the tunnel interface of branch A, which is 172.16.10.2, before finally reaching the PC at 50.1.1.10. So initially here, the traffic went all the way back to the hub before being sent to PC1. However, in the background, we actually have NHRP resolution being performed. And now a dynamic VPN tunnel has been built between branch A and branch C. So let's run this exact same trace route again and let's look at how our output looks differently. So we go out to our default gateway on the branch C router. And this time, look at the next hop. It's the tunnel interface of branch A. So instead of going all the way back to the hub, we have a dynamic tunnel that has been created and our traffic is going directly to the branch A router this time, and finally to PC1. If we go to our router at this site, the branch C router, let's run the same show command as we previously did. Let's say show IP NHRP. And now look at our output. Instead of a single tunnel, our statically configured tunnel to the hub, we have a second tunnel listed as a dynamic tunnel type, and the NBMA address is that of the branch A router. So this verifies that we have a DMVPN established and that our traffic is now taking a much more efficient route between these two branch sites. We can see that this will eventually expire. There's an expiration timer, but any traffic that goes between the sites is going to reset that tunnel timer for us. So that's a look at how we can configure DMVPN between Cisco routers and allow for dynamic reachability between neighboring routers through multipoint GRE and NHRP. I hope you found this content useful, and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.